Good morning, everyone. Uh, happy Father's Day, by the way. If you didn't know, today was Father's Day. Call up your dad and tell him, hey, happy Father's Day. Or maybe take him to breakfast or buy him a table saw or a game or, you know, things that fathers like. Or insert trademark marketing scheme advertisement here, which I don't have. <clears throat> But if I did, that would have been a good place to put it. Anyways, uh, today we're going to talk about the DLL. Oh, right, this folder. Uh, if you don't have it, it's the Dropbox folder from the last video. Uh, I'll post the link again. And if you want to follow along, you can get it. Um, everything in here I wrote myself. There's nothing malicious about it. It's all so you people can learn. If you want to, because learning is... Uh, definitely not a need. Uh, it's a want. You have to want to. Can't learn if you don't try. Anyways, so let's jump into it. I did write this, however, in Microsoft Visual Studio. Um, just because when it comes to DLLs, they, uh, they know what they're doing. It's easy. In uh, <clears throat> Dev C++, it, it's laid out a little bit different. And uh, if you don't have the right uh, uh, compiler option set, it it's not created right, and when you inject it, it does weird things. And instead of teaching you the quirks of that and the differences between that and the Microsoft compiler, um, we're just going to do it this way. You can get the uh, Express version of uh, Microsoft Visual Studio for free. I'll post a link in the description. Still feeling a bit under the weather. Uh, I got quite the nasty cough. My throat is killing me. Um, but, oh well, don't worry about it. I'm not too worried about it. It's been about a week now. Maybe I'll see a doctor tomorrow. I don't know. Whatever. We're, we're, we're fine. But anyways, um, yeah, Microsoft Visual Studio, it's simple. You file, new project, uh, Windows 32 application, create, and then you hit uh, DLL, next, and you're presented with something like this, I believe. It says my DLL in include standard effects, and then you got the standard fix, which is include standard fix and then you get DLL main and it has a uh, bool API entry DLL main uh, a switch with a bunch of cases which I have removed uh, because they're not really needed when you're just injecting a DLL uh, we don't really care about it being proper and unlinking right and cleaning up because our target program is going to do that for us most likely when it closes our stuff will close too. Uh, most people, a lot of times in this case here, will just spawn a, a thread, but we're already creating a thread to load it in. So why not use that thread that's already open? Um, so yeah, we first need to make a window. Why do we need to make a window, do you ask? Uh, well, we're going to hide the window, and we're going to use it just to send messages to with uh, post message from our um, our program that's going to use our target program's functions. And to make a window, we're going to need, well, a handle for the window. Uh, we're going to need a class. And to handle the messages, we're going to need a uh, definition for messages. Pretty easy. So the case that we are interested in is DLL process attach. So when this DLL is attached to a process, run this stuff. And so uh, then, you know, if there is a console, hey, why not say we are in? And uh, yeah. So then we need an H instance for our window class. Well, in this case, it's H module. Well, where'd that come from? It's passed to DLL main when it's injected or loaded, I should say. Uh, so it's right here, and that will be um, our target program. 
that we're going to need a class name. Hey, let's call it Hook Phone Home. Sounds good to me, right? And then let's define a uh, procedure to be called uh, for the window when it receives messages. And let's call it Window Procedure. And let's write it up here. And let's call it Callback with an L result for return. And uh, let's call it Window Procedure. And we'll define the typical message stuff. And then let's put a switch on the message dot message. I believe yeah, that's supposed to be, well, maybe not. Is it just message? Oh, yeah, it is. Right? Yeah. That's right. And then let's give it some cases here. Um, should probably give it a default case. Why not? Default break. There we go. That's better. So if uh, it doesn't match any, we'll just run the default and it'll just break. If it matches 101, we'll say call some functions, process some results. And then we're going to return uh, this function is for um, properly returning uh, you know, the L result for message loops. Uh, if that's not done right, the DL is going to yell at you. It's not going to work. It's going to fail. Um, so make sure and do this right. Don't put return zero, please. Um, okay, back down here. We're going to give it a style. We're going to say that it's as big as, well, uh, whatever the size of a window class is. Uh, we're going to say some icon crap, cursor crap. Uh, you could probably know all of this. I can't really remember. Uh, we don't have a menu, so let's call that null. Uh, no extras, background, whatever. Well, let's try to register it. If it fails to register, denoted by that, little exc exclamation point, which means not. So if this returns a zero and we not it, this statement will be true. So if that statement is true, then this didn't work. Return and just forget about it. Any further error processing? Sure, if you want to, but I don't care. And then let's create our window and let's store the handle in hwind, which we defined up here as shown earlier. And to create it, we're going to call create window ex. And we're going to give it a style of uh, window ex overlapped window. Sure, why not? You could give it whatever you want, it doesn't matter. Let's use the window class that we just made, hook phone home. Let's call it find me. Let's, hey, let's start it minimized. Why not? And then all of this from here to here can be null. Doesn't matter. Pretty much just does, isn't going to affect it one bit. But if you really want to know what they do, you can look them up or you can, uh, this is size, I believe. This is the inherited uh, window handle. Uh, I'm not sure what those two are. I don't really remember. This is the uh, H instance of the, uh, the, the program that's going to create it. But yeah, that's going to run. It's going to hopefully create a window for us. It's called find me, hook phone home. It's minimized. And then we're going to jump right into a loop that looks for it. And while it doesn't find it, it's going to sleep for 250 milliseconds. And as soon as it does find it, it will just move on. And it's going to move on to a call to show window, which is kind of counterintuitive because we're passing it SW hide, which is going to tell this window, denoted by the handle that is stored in hwind, which we know is from create window, the one we just made, we're going to hide it. We don't want people to see it. Just forget it was ever there. And then we're going to jump right into a message loop. Like I said, you could have created a, a thread and then use the other cases. You can just get rid of the cases. That's what I did. It doesn't matter for our purposes because we are making this to be injected. Anyways, that is that. And if we build it, it's going to build like it should. I'm going to close this because I hopefully don't need it again. Debug, here's a DLL. Grab it. Let's go to our binaries folder. Copy it over. Yeah, sure, overwrite it. Whatever. Run our dummy. Has nothing to do with our DLL. It runs. We run our program, which does have something to do with our DLL. It says, hey, find dummy. 
and inject my DLL. And then it just pauses. And if we come back, it says, hey, we are in. Call some function and process results. So in that message loop in the DLL, uh, the callback, which I closed already, but that's OK, is where we're going to be putting our code uh, to call functions within dummy. And we are going to tear into this guy in the next video to find those functions that we want to use in our program to do something. Don't know yet, but we're going to do something with them. And first we're going to tear into it with Ollie probably, and then we'll tear into it with Ida because it's always good to learn them both. And yeah, we're going to go from there. As always, thanks for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, do what you're going to do. Um, and then uh, suggestions for what you guys want to see. Uh, I'm thinking about doing two, three days a week, hopefully, of like learn assembly day, program day, reverse engineering day, where what we can focus on learning bits and pieces of assembly, what they mean, what they do, how to identify them. Um, reverse engineering day, we could take uh, user submitted programs, tear them apart, register them, figure out you know, the algorithms, we can add stuff to them, take stuff away from them, whatever, it doesn't matter. Programming day, we can make some sort of program that you guys want to know how to do. Um, uh, you know, key gens, uh, key loggers, uh, loaders, uh, you name it. Chat program, server client, packet editing, you know, you name it, we can figure it out. We'll, we'll do it together, we'll learn, and uh, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to stop rambling, I'm going to go, because... Uh, uh, yeah, while well, I still have a voice. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.